Sandro Diamante, the ball on a string and... Oh, damn it! Welcome back to All Out West, this week's Off The Pitch. Caleb, this is going to be a fun one. We were interviewing one of West United's OGs and probably the biggest breakout star of the club's short history. The Shimian shooter himself. Who do we have, Caleb? We've got Dylan Perias on the show today. How's it going, mate? How's it going, mate? Yeah, I'm not too bad. Just uh, finished up training today. Uh, another hard session, of course, in uh, pre-season is the, is the standard. Um, but no, feeling good. That's awesome. Now, I'm going to hit for a hard one straight off the bat here, man. It's not on your list. Palmy, Palmy or Palmer? Where you at with it? This is important to us. Well, of course, being a Melbourne boy, it's got to be Palmer. That's yeah. good. That's very good because we've been alarmed by our previous interviews thus far. Perfect. So um, <laughs> what exactly is your football story from the get How did you get into it as a youngster and how did you get to where you are today? Yeah, um, well, it all started uh, when I was six. Uh, I actually played like Auskick, so AFL. So the same, like, you know, grassroots football, but for yeah, I did Aussie, Aussie rules. Myself, so. <laughs> yeah, so I did uh, Auskick, um, and uh, I love the Pies. Uh, so I'm a Collingwood fan. <laughs> um, but no, then eventually uh, I ended up watching the 2006 World Cup when Australia played Italy. And that game kind of inspired me to want to change codes. And I asked my dad, said, oh, next year, can I play football? Um, and he was like, yeah, of course. Um, and that's how it basically all started. Yes. Oh, that's fantastic. That's awesome. Now, what has your experience been like with the development of West United since you signed in 2019? Um, yeah, the experience has uh, been great. Um, obviously, the first year I was there from the start. So that first season was um, I was still young and it was good. I, I came on a lot of the games, just breaking in. Um, trying to be like an impact player, which gave me more experience. And then obviously last season, um, fortunately, I got to play a lot more games. Um, ended up playing, uh, I think, all the games, but about 20 starts or something like that, which is, um, you know, which, which I wanted just to kick off um, my career, which was good. Um, so, yeah, my development, I think, at Western has been great. Um, and, yeah, I'm looking forward to another season. Excellent, excellent. Um, how are you finding the experience with uh, John Aloisi as manager compared to Mark Rubin in these early stages? Um, you know, it's still early. Uh, I've only been training, uh, well, the boys have been training for five, six weeks now, but obviously when I came back from the Olympics, I had to quarantine for two weeks, then I got a little bit of time off, which was needed. So I've only been back for less than five days. Um, but look, you know, I love Mark as well. He, he taught me a lot of things. I learned a lot of things under him. And I'm sure John is going to teach me a lot more things as well. And I'm just looking forward to, to um, being, working with John and him improving my game. And, yeah, I'm excited. It's yeah. awesome. How is preseason training going? I know you've only had five days of it, but is there any high points? Um, I think just seeing the boys again. Yeah. Um, you know, I've, I've been away for a long time. I think it, I, I was, the last time I was at the club was eight weeks ago. Um, nine, almost nine weeks. I haven't been at the club. So it was my highlight so far is probably just getting around the boys, seeing the boys again, being around the staff, just having a laugh. Um, so that's, that's uh, been my highlight. Probably not the really hard running, <laughs> but um, yeah, seeing the boys. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so, we know that you had your breakaway season last season. Uh, what areas of your game are you trying to improve so that hopefully you can have an even better campaign this season? Um, I think for me, uh, what's important is maybe the the execution, the final little part. Um, I do feel like, um, you know, I get into good areas, use my pace, um, and then sometimes I might rush some decisions. So that's something that just the final product that I'd really like to work on. And, you know, I scored six goals last year, um, and I played, you know, right back, right wing back, right yeah. wing. I played a lot yeah, of positions. Yeah, that's right. So hopefully this year I think I'm more getting looked at as more just a right winger with the four, bit of a formation change compared to last year. But uh, I'm looking just for that final product and hopefully a few more goals and assists and stuff like that. So just work on my finishing and stuff like that. So, yeah. Yeah, it's <laughs> That's definitely, like, that'd be great. Uh, what is it like being a professional athlete in the, the COVID area of the era, sorry? 
Um, it's a, it's it's obviously difficult. Um, like you don't, we don't know when the season's starting. Um, you know, we don't know. Like obviously, the last couple, like the last seasons, the last couple of seasons, we've experienced the COVID crowds, no crowds, hub. Um, so it's a bit, bit, bit difficult, as in hard to get a rhythm and a schedule going. Um, so you know, it is what it is. You know, being a professional footballer is just something you have to deal with, and I think I'm used to it now. I'm not expecting anything. I'm just going day by day, and yeah. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, I think that's how we're all kind of living our daily lives, even not as footballers. Yeah, well. that's right. Everything's a bit up in the air. So, but you guys, yeah, to be able to do what you're doing and yeah, jumping in hubs away from family and friends, um, yeah, and still putting on a spectacle for all of us sitting at home, yeah, it's been it's been great, and we love the sacrifice that thanks, you thank guys, you, yeah, you guys have taken. Yeah, um, a key moment for fans last season was brace against Perth Laurie. We actually managed to score the two in one game in that massive 5-4 win. Um, what was it like, yeah, scoring two in one game? Did it feel any different to just scoring the odd, the odd goal? Um, yeah, obviously it was, it, was, it was special to me because it was my first, well, two A-League goals of my career, which was made it even more special. But I was just wrapped that I came on and brought it to 2-2, then took the lead with 3-2 with my second goal and it was more just the rap for the team, like just to be able to help them when I come on. And, you know, we ended up winning 5-4, which was good. But, yeah, it was obviously a very special moment for me and my family scoring my first goals. And, yeah, I think if you saw the way I celebrated, you could tell I was um, quite happy. Very, and I, Very passionate celebration. Yeah, I, I, did, I didn't think I was going to celebrate with like that. But in the moment, like, it just how it goes. Look, we'd love to see it, and especially in talking about this COVID era as well, the fact that it was a packed out, or not packed out, but full stadium that day, and you would have been yeah. in front of your family and friends as well, would have made it more special. I was yeah, there. It was, it was an amazing day out. Yeah, it was grouse. It was grouse. So speaking of that, you made the transition from super sub to full-time player last season. How was that? Did that change how you were training or anything around the game? Um, no, not really. Um you know, I think that uh, I've, I was always kind of ready. Um, you know, even though I was a super sub kind of at the start, um, I always thought if I get my chance to start, I'm going to take it and I'm, I'm, I'm going to be ready. Like I never just thought, oh, yeah, I'm happy just to be coming off the bench, making impact. Um, I'm just going to take it easy. No, I was always um, ready and prepared to try and make that starting 11 and consistently play 60, 70, 90 minutes of the game. Um, so nothing really changed my mentality. Um, I was always just uh, ready to do a job. Nice. And that you, d- you did throughout the amount of time Thank you played last season. Thank Amazing. You. Fantastic. And due to those good performances last season, you got your call up to the Ollie Roos in the Olympics. How, was, how, how did you feel when you first got that call up? Um, yeah, it was a really uh, amazing moment for me and my family. Um, like I was never a part of any under 23s camp before that, um, you know, due to probably n- not really starting, playing, not playing. It was quite hard to, you know, make, uh, you know, the selection of camps and stuff. But obviously I ended up playing a lot of games and I did really well and I uh, ended up getting the call up, which for me, you know, that was probably the highlight of my year. Um, and I was just honoured, privileged. And um, yeah, it's something that I'll probably never forget in uh, in my life. So yeah, it was just amazing. Yeah. And look, we loved seeing you as well out there. And you, you and Lockie especially, and even all the other young talent that we've got from other clubs around the country and um, players playing abroad too. It was a, especially yeah. that first game against Argentina. Fantastic. Yeah, it was, yeah, you guys are just proud. Thank you. What was your highlight of Japan and was it the cardboard beds? <laughs> <laughs> well, lucky for us, we weren't in the village, so we oh, didn't really? get to we didn't get to experience the cardboard beds. We were uh, actually in nice uh, luxury hotels with a real bed. Um, yeah, so our group games were just not in Tokyo. So um, they were in Sapporo and other places. So we just stayed in hotels. Um which was good because we're on our own and stuff like that. But I think we wanted to be in the village to kind of get that real Olympic um, feel. Mm. Um, But yeah, 
yeah, the highlight of Japan was just honestly all of it, just being there, being an Olympian, being with all some boys I didn't know, a lot of the boys I did know, just making new friends, just basically doing what I love, playing football um, at the Olympics. Like the whole thing was a highlight and I loved it, yeah. That's amazing. Who did you share a room with in Japan? Um, well, luckily I got the privilege to share with Connor Metcalf oh, nice. um, from Melbourne City. Um, he's a really close friend of mine. Uh, I've known him from age 13, 14. Um, we've been friend, friends since then. Obviously, I was in the Melbourne City Academy for five years with him, uh, going up together to the first team. So, um, yeah, he's a good friend of mine and uh, I haven't seen him in a long time. So it was good to, to room with him and he's, he's a legend of a guy. Um, and, uh, yeah, we had some really funny moments in the room. Um, so as, as you get a bit bored in a hotel, you, you pretend to get up to no good sometimes. So it was a good funny moments and, uh, yeah, it was, it was great fun. That's great. Awesome. Awesome. And he's another one who had a good campaign last season for his club. So yeah, very good. So, um, what's your current go-to song on Spotify? If you had to pick one. My go-to songs or playlist yeah. or... Um, yeah, look, pick a song and pick a playlist or yeah, just um, whatever you want to say about it. Well, it depends on... I'm, um, I'm a man of all genres. I listen to a lot of different music. Depends what mood I'm in, but I would say my go-to would be rap, R&B. Um, yeah. But I do find myself belting out some songs in the car to old 80s songs. Um, I've got a soft spot for Queen. Yeah, um, as we all do. Everyone does. Yeah. Everyone does. Yeah, got a bit of a uh, soft spot for Bohemian Rhapsody, all those songs. I love it. Um, but maybe on game day, I love a bit of techno, deep house. Yeah, I, I honestly listen to like everything. Just depends yeah, on. I'm a bit similar to you, so I understand it completely. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, bit of a, throw, a spanner in the works here, mate. Uh, what's your biggest inspiration as a footballer and a person? Um. Probably I'd say my biggest inspiration like would be just doing the best I can. Um, I feel like, you know, you can have no regrets in your life if you just give everything you've got, um, try your hardest and, you know, whatever happens, whatever your journey is, it is what it is. Um, you definitely don't want to be thinking, oh, I could have trained harder, I could have done this, could have done that. And you never know what you could have achieved. I think, you know, just, Try your best and see what happens. Yeah, fantastic. That's what we want to hear. Uh, did you or do you have any pre-game rituals that you put into place? Um, no, nah, I'm not a very um, like a superstitious person. Um, I, I feel like if you start superstitions, I feel like it just puts extra pressure on you. And if you, you know, maybe if you do some certain things before games and you, for some reason, you don't get to do it, it might play on your mind. So I'm just like free. Like I, like I don't eat a certain thing on game day. I just, whatever, I'm just easy. Go to the game. Some people like to put their left boot on instead of their right boot first, like stuff like that, or the way they tape their thing. Like I'm just like, oh, I don't know, whatever. I just free minded. Easy traveler. Yeah. This has been a real fun one for us to get to know the people and just the, like the different kinds of people. Do you know Topa Stanley likes a pregame nap? Um, no, I, I, he's actually next to me in the change room, so I've got to get to know him a bit, a bit more. So I'm going to ask him about that. But no, yeah. he likes a pregame nap. Didn't know that. That's nap. A, it's really like obscure. I wasn't expecting that. Like, you know what I mean? It's just a sports yeah. person, a bit of a kip. Yeah, but, uh, it depends how long you can spin. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Um, that's all we have for today. Do you have anything you'd like to pass on to fans? Um, yeah, of course. Um, look, I know it's tough in lockdown, um, but hopefully the season will start soon and we'll, you have something to watch and we can uh, try and win as many games for you because at the end of the day, we do this for the fans and if there was no fans, there would be no football. It's just a fact. Um, so hopefully when the games start, we can put a smile on your face. Hopefully lockdown will be over by then. You can come to the games, cheer a song because that's what we need. We need you guys there because when we win, it's like you guys win as well. Um, you know, there's not just 11 people on the field. There's however at the stadium, everyone's behind us. And um, I just want to say, hopefully you can come to the game, support us. And yeah.
Yeah, awesome. thanks, mate. Fantastic stuff. We'll be in uh, the active support, so uh, come past. We'll be on the beers. We're always there, as you've seen already. So. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Lovely. Yeah. Thanks again for your time today, Dill, and all the best for the upcoming season. Hope to hear from you soon. No, nah, no worries. Thanks, you guys, for having me. Um, thank you. Thank you.